Today we're going to do a head-to-head -head between the Sinku 300 watt power station and this Neohura portable electric kettle. I've done reviews on both of these. Let me show you some clips from those reviews here. And two outlets, 300 watts maximum, 110 volts, get ready, pure sine wave not a modified sine wave, pure sine wave output. Here is a jigsaw. It pulls 2.2 amps. We'll plug that in and let's see if it can run it. Pulling about 70 to 80 watts and I'm sure under load it'll pull more than that. Here's an old skill drill, 3 8 inch drill. It says 3 amps on it. I'm going to start off slow and we'll see what it's going to be able to do. Bolt right there, 186 watts, 181 watts. No problem at all. And this is one of those car polisher things. Now this has a variable speed control on it. So let's see. That's at the lowest speed right there. And I'm going to slowly raise that. This is rated at 10 amps, by the way, way more than this can supply, but let's see what we can do. And it overloaded at some point. This is one of those little personal heaters. Runs on 120 volts, 200 watts. Let's see if it can run it. I expect it probably will start it without any problem, but let's see what it can do. Oh, there's heat coming out indeed. Yes. Yes, indeed it works. It holds 380 milliliters, which is 13 fluid ounces. It claims it'll heat water in five minutes, but the problem with that is we don't know what temperature the water was to start with that they used. If you start with 32 degree or zero degree Celsius water, it's going to take a lot longer than five minutes to get to boiling. I have here in this beaker room temperature water which right now is oh about 74 degrees it looks like this unit is also great for those who are off the grid or have solar energy or anything like that because it only uses about 300 watts for it to heat so let's go ahead and put some water in so we'll take that off and I'll go ahead and pour water in. I'm going to pour right up to that max line in there. Right there. And we'll put the top on. And we're going to set this to full 212 degree boiling. So let's go ahead and do that. When you press it, it's going to start at the highest temperature and then you can lower it down. I also have a stopwatch on my phone here so we'll get that going and I'll start them at just about the same time I'll leave the phone back there get this out of the way and uh, we'll wait and I will come back when this is done also notice it is showing the temperature of the water right there as it heats it up 
at the rate it's going, that's pretty quick, but it takes more and more energy to get to the boiling point. So we're going to have to wait for that. I'll be back as soon as this is done. And I can go ahead and pour that in here. And you can see how it fogged up the glass without any problem. So this pulls 300 watts. This is 300 watts. Will it do it? I don't know. Let me take it out of the box and we'll get everything set up. All right, we're all set. I'll take off the top here. We'll pour water up to the max line, which is there. I think that was about 13 ounces, if I recall. Okay, a little over. <laughs> Good enough. Nothing here is going to be scientific. We'll put the lid on. Plug it into our power station. And let's turn this on. We're still showing a full battery, but... It doesn't give you an actual percentage. I know it's down because I've used it for an hour at about 40 to 50 watts. Turn on AC. That powered up. I forget if you have to turn it on for it to tell Yeah, you do. So what's going to happen here is it's either going to work or it's not. 212 full boil. Oh, it might do it. We're already down one... Oh, the screen gets all fugatsed when I do that. So I don't know what it started at. 50-something, which is the coldest I could get out of the tap. That's cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually handling it. That is pretty impressive. 265, 271, 262, 258. Our temperature is definitely going up. Seems to have stalled and gone down. <laughs> and gone down more, back up. 274. Now we're climbing. So we'll leave this. Uh, I'm not really going to time it. We're just going to see if the battery pack can handle it. Ooh, <laughs> we've gone down another notch. Not great, and not doing well. I'll come back once we're at the boil, if we can make it. We're coming along, 142, 268, 271, 256, 277. And the fan in here has come on because it knows it's in labor. But it seems to be holding. And I think it's going to do it. I, I can't see any reason why not, so we'll come back as soon as it's burled. We're getting some odd readings now. The fan in it has shut off. So it was like 116, then it goes back to 200, 1 something, 103. 108, then 260, so it's kind of cycling the element on and off. We've lost yet another tick mark on there. I, I don't think the camera can point it out, but I see the display going bright dim, bright dim, bright dim. So it's definitely cycling, as we see from the wattage usage. But, uh, yeah, it's going to actually hit 212, and then it still takes a little bit until it actually shuts off. Fan came back on. That thing will beep, I think, when it's done. Still pulling wattage. There it is. Now it finally shut off. So there's our burled water.
you can see the steam it. Maybe it'll steam up the lens. So yeah, it definitely worked. It did it, but it's not really a good idea. Because of the high wattage draw of this, when I say high, that's compared to what this can output. This is 300 watts. This is 300 watts. Didn't quite pull 300. So that's why it was able to handle it. But look how much battery we used. Now I was not at 100% because like I said, this only shows you like five steps worth over there. So like 20% each way. So we're down to 40% battery. Could it do it again? I don't know. I'm not going to find out. Uh, how long it took probably about 10 minutes or so and look how far down this thing recharges takes seven hours to recharge not good to do it's certainly viable you can get it done and have a cup of tea but then run a gas generator in a power outage for seven hours to recharge this thing that's kind of ridiculous and that is kind of the moral lesson here. When you are buying things like generators and or air compressors and there's probably a bunch more as far as like lawn equipment and stuff like that, you want to always buy more than you need. Yes, this did the job 300 watts, 300 watts, but look at the cost. It did it but not for long. And then seven hours to recycle. Obviously, this is undersized for the job. And that's what a lot of big, fat, dumb American consumers do. They buy based on price. I am a big, fat American consumer. Leave the dumb part out because I'm giving you the smarts now. They buy based on price. Here's an air compressor, Harbor Freight, $65. I'll build a house with it. No, you fucking will not. It will not happen. It does not have the chooch to run a, a framing nailer or anything like that. Can it do it? You might fire a nail, but then you're waiting for that compressor to recycle. It's going to take you ages to build that house. On the other hand, if you got yourself a nice... I don't know, 20, 30 gallon compressor, something like that. Yeah, maybe. And if you've ever seen roofers come by, the shingles are held on with nails. They have pneumatic nail guns. And what do they have to run that? Big compressors, not the little Harbor Freight jobby. So you want to always size your equipment higher than what you're going to be doing. You want to exceed that margin well over and buy not based on price but based on performance for what job you need to accomplish. That's kind of the point therein. So yes, it was successful in this head-to-head -head competition but it's not really viable because it's undersized. Now I have another uh, power station here that's 600 watts and that being only three I'd only be running it at 50 percent capacity it could run for quite some time doing that certainly a lot longer than this guy at only 300 watts because it's more suited to the application that's the whole point of this exercise and this video and that will bring this one to a close I thank you very kindly for watching. I appreciate all of you for, for watching. And uh, that's going to wrap this up. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.